Welcome to NRL Insider on Sky Sports. Joining us now, oh, bit of the one and only, Adam Fanua Blake. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Good, good. Happy Feel to be. Happy to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel good in that uh, Warriors outfit? Yeah, I'm um, enjoying it, man. Um, it's uh, like something different. It's a bit refreshing, um, you know. But it's good. The boys here are great. They've, um, you know, they welcomed me first day, um, so I didn't have to waste any time um, sort of getting to know anyone. Um, same with the coaching staff. So, um, you know, well, I'm loving it at the moment. Tongan Heritage, uh, courtesy you and your parents, lived in uh, New Zealand for quite some time, but uh, now live in uh, Australia. Um, have you always had a little bit of a soft spot for, like, this New Zealand Rugby League and the Warriors? I mean, some of their players are so you. Yeah, oh, well, definitely growing up, um, you know, I didn't really uh, know too much about the Warriors. Uh, you know, obviously, I was born in Queensland, so um, I was a big Bronco supporter. But, um, you know, obviously growing up, like, getting to know the game more and watching more footy, you know, um, you know, grew quite fond of um, Ruben Ricky, how he, like, he just um, coming back off the back fence in, in every run. And, yeah. you know, when Steve Price came across, um, you know, he was, a, he was a great player. And, you know, obviously, uh, Neil Stacey, you know, he's a little gun, so, you know, um, and even now, um, you know, players like Roger and, um, and Tohu and, um, you know, Jazz, you know, they're all, um, you know, really good players. So, um, you know, I'm uh, looking forward to being able to get in the mix with them sort of players as well. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to a couple of others. There was a guy called Joe Vagana, who was a little yeah. bit before your time in the NRL, before you were watching, and even your welfare manager here, Jerry C. Yeah. So they, they particularly are exactly what, you know, like Warriors Rugby League was like back in the time. Yeah, um, you know, obviously um, I've been through uh, the Warriors facility um, in prior years, um, you know, for some uh, rep duties, and I've been in the gym there and I've seen, um, you know, big Jerry's half. Uh, face up on the wall yeah you know um, and I heard a few stories about him you know very aggressive player uh, big body just you know uh, sort of just off the back fence and um, you know it was, it's um, really good having him here you know obviously he's he's not a part of the coaching squad but just seeing uh, the way he sort of carries himself um, you know if you meet him here you'd think you know he's a, a priest or something <laughs> you wouldn't tell that he was uh, a big scary guy on the field but um, you know uh, I guess that's uh, that's just Jerry uh, you know he's on the field, does his job, you know, does what the team needs, and off the field, he's just a big caring guy. So, you know, it's a credit to him. I guess uh, when the opportunity came up to, to sign with the Warriors, uh, in your head was, okay, I'm going to take the family and, and, and go and live in New Zealand. And, and that was quite exciting, knowing that you have history in New Zealand. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it did take a while to, you know, obviously come to terms with um, what, you know, what was going on. Um, you know, there was a few clubs, but... Um, yeah, just uh, you know, when, when I sort of just had a look at the roster that that we have here at the Warriors and and um, some of the sacrifices they made last year, like it just sort of you know obviously tells you a lot about the club, um, a lot of selfless acts, um, and then obviously on the other side of that you got you know a lot of world class players, you know. So um, you know, I definitely think that we're building something special here um, in the in the years to come. Um, so you know, uh, I was thinking about you know obviously wanting to be a part of that and. Um, you know, building something here with, alongside a lot of the good players we have. So hopefully, in you know, then this year and the years to come, we can, um, you know, set up a real good uh, future for the Warriors. And you just mentioned before that um, you know, like the Warriors have been fantastic in the NRL, and you come up to Tamworth here, and they give you a house for your family to live really close to the complex here. But um, in the end, you thought, oh, it's probably better that to bring my family into the hotel, and we might as well be here with Fuss's yeah. family and um, Benny Murdoch's family and all that, so they can all get together. That's what it will be like. You know, I feel like if uh, my team's really tight knit off the field, it really sort of helps when on the field, you know, you really want to play for each other because you're tight, not, it's not just a job, you don't, you're not just here with your workmates, it's like, it's like you are playing with your family. So, yeah. you know, um, Gus said it as well, like, you know, this is an ideal environment at the moment that we're in, so we've got to take advantage of it. Um, you know, we're, like, we're sort of living together, getting to know each other more every day, hanging out with each other, you know, growing uh, strong friendships. So, you know, um, hopefully we can, you know, transfer that from off field onto the field and, you know, we can have a, you know, just a real, real strong team that plays for each other. Adam, you've got a um, lot of history behind you already as a player. Um, when you take it back to, obviously you're a Broncos supporter, having been 
brought up there and, grew, and born there, but um, it was really sort of like pretty much the, uh, I guess, St George Lawara in those two years with the uh, NYC, the under 20s comp that started to really stamp you as a player. Yeah, to be fair. I had um, two great coaches there, um, Benny Hornby and Dean Young. Yep. And, um, you know, they sort of went from being just a big footy player to like a, a smart footy player. Um, you know, size can get you, only get you so far, you know, and then once you get, you know, a bit older, everyone starts to grow and catch up. So, you know, you got to start looking for more ways to, you know, outdo your opponent. And um, so, like, they helped me a lot coming through. And then obviously moving for, moving forward from there, um, Trent Barrett and, and uh, Desi Hasler, you know, they, they, you know, help mold me to the sort of the player I am today, um, you know, but I'm still looking to improve. Yeah. Um, you know, Brownie's um, helping me on a lot of things that he thinks I can improve on. And um, then I'm just here chipping away. Hopefully this year I um, can, you know, do some special things on the field. Well, a lot of people won't realise is back in that uh, NYC time with St George, you actually captain the side uh, yeah. back then. And you've got guys like you and Aitken and that around you, cross paths again. Yeah. But there's leadership. Yeah, well, I was a bit surprised actually um, playing, uh, captaining that side. Um, you know, I used to always be sort of the guy that mucks around. And then when they, <laughs> when they told me to co-captain along with uh, Adam Kroon playing the Dragons at the moment, yeah, I was I was pretty shocked. I, I knew Kroon was going to uh, definitely be one of the captains. But when they, when they said my name to you, I was like, oh, well. <laughs> so, you know, I think that was more more them trying to ask me stop to, to stop mucking around. <laughs> so yeah. they gave me the uh, captaincy, co-captaincy, but... Um, Give you something yeah. else to think about. Yeah, <laughs> no, but it was, um, it was good. It was, like, um, you know, it was a different role in the team and, um, you know, it was something, you know, sort of treasure, you know, not, not many times you can captain a team, um, you know, so, you know, that, I felt like I played my bit there and, you know, it was sort of, you know, that um, as well, like helped me grow as a player, a bit yeah. of maturity and stuff like that. Rep stuff starts to come around. Um, New Zealand, mm -hmm. courtesy of your parents, you can play for them. Mm -hmm. Is that how you ended up playing with the, the junior Kiwis? Yeah, well, um, it was pretty funny that um, I had a few um, Kiwi selectors approach me um, when I first played 20s. I forgot who their name was, so, so, yeah. so if they're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, and uh, they asked me, like, obviously, um, you know where my mother and father were born and yeah. told them and they said oh, look you know you're eligible to play both um would you um think about playing for kiwis and um at the time i was like i was like tossing it up and but i just thought you know um uh, to test myself why not play against the best so i thought yeah you know like australia has always been the benchmark so i would all, like i'd love to go up against them and test myself against them so um yeah i ended up uh, playing for Junior Kiwis that year, and um, we were lucky enough to get the win over the Junior Kangaroos. You weren't lucky, mate. You guys were destined to win. No. I mean, 2014, you got uh, Joseph Tarpane, Nelson Asafa Solomona, Sam Lasoni, and Cody Nicarimas playing. Yeah. And then it's like uh, Tamari Martin kicks a field goal to win the game, and it's at Mount Smart. Yeah. Back in NZ as well, which I guess you hadn't travelled a lot back to New Zealand yeah. at that time, but it would have been a special experience as well. Yeah, well, it was. Um, I have family there in New Zealand and they came to watch, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, it was very special for me to, you know, just get to, like any rep team you make, you know, it's, it's a special occasion because you never know when uh, it might be your last, so, yeah. you know, and that was actually a really good game. Um, uh, I think uh, Clint Gufferson had a had a chance to win the game on full time. Uh, it was from the front about 40 metres out and he, he actually missed it, so. He needs uh, a goal kicking coach. <laughs> Oh, not anymore, <laughs> not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> Gaffer is, uh, he's, he's, he's pretty man. well rounded at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, like, it was good. Uh, I mean, and then we still hold on to those um, sort of friendships now through first grade, now that we were all playing first grade. Um, you know, we never really forget each other. Like, coming straight back into Warriors, um, you know, um, pretty um, tight with Cody. Yeah. And, um, you know, whenever I see Nelson, was actually when I uh, we debuted for Kiwis together, uh, yeah. for the older grade Kiwis. and. Um, he was actually my roomie, so yeah. Uh, you know, keep uh, keep real tight with Nelson, you know, and Joe, Joey Tuppany, and, and um, you know, so it's it's really good. Like, it's not like you just play for the team and that's it. Um, you know, once you play, like you know, you always sort of keep that bond with with um, with one another. So yeah. I would suggest to you that that bond would be so important to what is happening here at the Warriors for 2021 and beyond. Yeah, definitely. Um, like. Like we were saying, I was saying earlier, uh, you know, we want to 
sort of uh, grow this team to be more than just a work workspace. We want this to be a family, um, right from the you know from the people in the front head office to the guys that you know put the gear out before before game day. You know, everyone's involved. Everyone's um, everyone's a part of it. Um, so you know, at the moment we're building and um, we're building for a bigger future. So you know, that, you even that, got the CEO living with you guys. Yeah. So we got the CEO. We have got um, you know we even got Gus coming in, feel good coming in. Yeah. Couple of times a week, you know. So, you know, this we want this sort of we want to leave a legacy that you know, long after we're gone, everyone's still living it. Um, and you know, the, we, and our main focus is to bring as much success to the club as possible, whether it be through us or after us. Um, you know, but it's just a, it's about putting the club in you know the right um, position moving forward. Yeah. Uh, I think I think we're doing that at the moment. Under twenties, junior Kiwis, footy's fun. Doesn't yeah. have a lot of responsibility. You make your debut in the NRL, things start to get a little bit more serious. You do that with Manly. Uh, your pathway to Manly, obviously Trent Barrett uh, went there to coach. Yeah. The Travojevic brothers are there. You had a couple of guys around you would have known. I think you had Louis Brown was there at the time. Marty Tapo yeah. was uh, coming through as well. Yeah, so it was actually really good. Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, going to Manly as a rookie and um, not knowing much about the game or oh, as much as I do now, I uh, had a lot of players to learn off. Um, obviously, Marty had a big influence. Um, Jake, yep. the machine, uh, you know, uh, I had players like Nate Miles, Brendan Lawrence there, so they're like old heads, but had played a lot of footy. Um, Nate, you know, played everything, um, you know, so I had a lot of good sort of mentors and people that I can learn off. Um, even Sasai Abave, he was, um, he was uh, really helpful in, in my younger days. But um, you know, moving forward, like fast forward a couple of years, I started to like um, all the older players started to leave, and then like I had sort of turned into like not an older player, but like more experienced, and the younger players coming through. So it was just like, oh, you know, you got to do your best, and you like try and help, you know, the next the next next crop of junior players coming through. And mainly it was a fairly young team. Um, you know, we had a lot of young players coming through, and all with you know raw talent, you know what I mean, that could be anything in the game, they just needed like the right mentors and uh, I feel like we did help out, help them out a, li a lot, um, you know, young Ten um, Daniela Paseca, I reckon he's yeah. still going to be a superstar, um, you know, and I feel like, you know, they're still coming through now, they, they've still got a, a lot of um, um, ability coming through. So. 2017 sees a great opportunity at the World Cup for New Zealand, you're lucky to be a part of that alongside Nelson, Sofa yeah. Solomona, but you only get to play the one game. And then yeah. it ends, you know, not in the right manner either. Yeah. Oh, well, like, I sort of could understand why. Uh, there was a lot of older boys at the time um, playing really good footy, uh, you know, but um, I just went there just to, you know, get, like, yeah, um, experience it for myself. Sure. Um, you know, and I like, have nothing bad to say about the camp. It was, you know, it was good. I got to meet, um, you know, obviously Roger, Sean, um, Jared Riagos, mm. uh, you know, like um, Isaac Liu, you know, get to like you know ex experience how they how they prepare and how they train, like the, the professional, how professional they are, um, you know, and you know, I, I just felt like my, um, you know, like home is where your heart is, you know, like um, Tonga, it was just like uh, it was more me, um, yeah. and that's no disrespect to the um, to the Kiwis, um, they have a great. You know, they have a great organisation and, and yeah, they've had a great team for a number of years, but I just felt like me, my like my strong bond was with Tongan, like yeah. because that's what I grew up more around, being back in that Tongan. So um And and you're more than uh, accommodated in both, you know what yeah. I mean? And the fact that Tonga over the next year or so, the ride that you had with Tonga yeah. was oh my goodness, who wouldn't want to be part of that? Yeah, um, well, yeah, no, the, the fans are, are what sort of make our camp, um, but in there, but like just getting in there with the boys um, in, the, in the camp, you know, it's just like um, you leave your family to go to another family, you know what I mean? Like it yeah. doesn't feel like how lucky am yeah, I? <laughs> like you, like you don't, you know, like you, it's just full on, like, and there's always something to do, like, you know, um, say if you leave the team room. Everyone goes, you can just go knock on someone's door and there'll be like five guys in there playing cards, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. so like there's always something to do on the, on those camps and, you know, so, you know, like we, everyone's really close, you know, like there's no little um, little groups that hang out, it's just like one big group, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah it's really lucky. 2019, 
sees a massive opportunity never been done before in Mama Te Tonga, mm. take down Australia. It had a bit of a build up though, didn't it really? Because you play uh, against, uh, I think, England and, and beat England in a, yeah. in a game Britain. earlier on. Great Britain earlier on. Um, and then you're sort of without halves in your game. You've got all the big guys up front. You've got no problem. You've got Jason Taumalolo. You've got yourself. Um, in fact, you start, we're supposed to start off the bench, but you come on and replace Andrew Fafita in the starting lineup that day. And Christian Wolf has just got it nailed, hasn't he? Yeah, well, that's. You know, that's why they got him as coach, Wolfie. Um, he just sort of understands the team. Um, you know, I think he, he had a vision in his head. Um, you know, the previous year, 2018, we didn't really get the um, result we wanted, um, even though, like, we lost. We lost by a blowout, you know. Uh, yeah. And that was all sort of, the camp was pretty rushed. We were only in there for a week and a half, you know, didn't get no warm-up game, like, or not warm-up game, but like, you know, like a game before, you know. Um, well, the other two teams, they got two two games, we just got the one. Um, so we had guys coming in, um, you know, we've, they hadn't played in a long time, um, doing fitness though, but, you know, I think any player will tell you nothing can compare to match fitness, uh, you know, so, yeah, we'll be under, underdone that one, but um, I feel like on 2019, uh, Wolfie had a plan um, and he stuck to it and, you know, it just credit to him, he coached us the best he could and, um, you know, we came out the other end um, with the win. The forward pack that day was like, you know, no wonder you not only could go with Australia, but get over top of them. You've got Jason Taumalolo, Manu Mau, Ben Murdoch, Masella, Saliva Havili, uh, Andrew Fafita, and like I mentioned, you're off the bench, but you actually end up starting. The thing was driving that team around the field is the most difficult thing because you can't just have all the big guys up front without any drivers. And you didn't, Tui Lola here played at half. But he shifted Katoni Staggs yeah. from the centre into 5-8. And that ten ended up being a winning blow winning yeah, for him. Like, I, think, I just think that goes to show how classy um, Katoni is. Um, it was unfortunate. Um, he didn't get to play against um, Great Britain because his uh, grandmother passed away. Um, so he had to obviously leave camp. He left camp for the week and he just came back. Yeah. And... Um, Man, he didn't look like he was, you know, out of place. I think, you know, that obviously going back and having his grandmother's, um, I think it was funeral, uh, must have, you know, really dri driven him to want to perform, uh, you know. Uh, and he came back and, you know, I reckon he was a real standout. Um, yeah. You know, for a centre to come out and play halves against the, one of the best teams in the world, um, well, if not the best team in the world, and play the way he did, you know, just shows you how how classy he is and why he's one of the best at what he does um you know but obviously not to take anything away from Tui, i reckon he had two of, two of the best games I, yeah. um, i've seen him play for a long time um yeah. you know and i think he got a nominee for the golden boot um too so you know and that's a credit to him um, he had an outstanding year over there in england um i think he won the um it was a cup i'm not too sure the cup, the cup is yeah. gordon england i think he won it and um Carried his form into those two games, and um, you know he, you know, got us on the front foot. He had a terrific kicking game, um, you know, and it, he really brought like players like Jenko and and Connie and uh, Dan Toops and and uh, Fuss into the game. The way he, you know, he delivered them all the ball. So, you know, I think just all around um, the second second time we played Australia, we were just more um, ready. We knew what was coming. We knew, you know, like everyone. Everyone wanted the game more the second time around. Like you didn't want to be, yeah, didn't want to be, didn't want to get embarrassed the way we did like the year before. Everyone sort of remembered the hurt, yeah, you know the way it felt. Um, you know, in the sheds afterwards, it was just like, oh, like we asked <laughs> for this game, we well practically begged them for this game, and we come out and put up this sort of performance. You know, it's sort of embarrassing. So everyone came in like, in shape, like so we didn't have to waste any time on anything else. And you know, we just whatever the coach threw at us, we done, and then. When time came to train together, everyone was at 100 percent. You know, we, we knew muck around whenever you want, but as soon as time, like you know, the whistle goes, that's time uh, we really should be focusing because you know other teams are gonna muck around with us when we're mucking around. So, yeah. what about the party afterwards? Oh, man. <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> no. Oh man, afterwards, man, it was just like oh, it was crazy, man. Like 
Oh, I mean, we, uh, we obviously that night we celebrated. Uh, you know, we flew back to Australia. I had to get a surgery that, that day. We flew back uh, on my um, shoulder. Um, straight out of the surgery party, <laughs> and, uh, went to Tonga, and they, um, you know, we were there for a week. Partied every day in Tonga, uh, and um, you know, the, when we got over there, it was just like, it's like well, because I lived there before, so okay, you know, and. Walking past everyone when I when I lived there, like no one knew who I was. But then going back there after winning that game, it, everyone was like asking me to take stuff from their shop for free, like oh, you know, not just me, but everyone in the team. Like you know, they were giving like souvenirs, like as a, like as a, like thank you, like what we had done, yeah. you know. And it just it's real humbling. Like we just, all we do is win a game, and we know we we touch everyone back in you know, in like in the homelands, you know, like everyone back there's you know. Right, like over the over the moon, like I seen some things on social media. There was a wedding, and they had paused like the wedding and watched the last five minutes. Everyone was watching the last five minutes of our game, and then when we had won, the, the wedding started back up. But the DJ was playing music, so it was just yeah. They was, had to say I do then. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, it's just crazy, man. Like the way, like that, you know, the game sort of uh, brings everyone together, you know, and uh, the like, you know, that everyone's riding the same wave, all the emotion. Like, you know, and like we, you can feel it when you're playing. Um, you know, when they're singing the hymns and when they're cheering for you. And like, you know, it's just it's a it's a feeling you can only like, experience. You know, if you're there. So, one of the really good things about the Warriors is that they embrace all cultures. Um, and you've been having some cultural nights here in yeah. camp too. You know, yeah. like uh, there's a couple more to go. Yeah. Um, but they've been so I guess uh, embracing for everyone. Yeah. Um, I think that's really. Yeah, that's it's been really, really good. Um, you know, um, a lot of the Australian boys here have, might not have, uh, you know, experienced, or even like in any of the cultures, might not have experienced other people's cultures. So when we're doing these nights, it's really good because we all buy into it, and mm -hmm. everyone, you know, gets a go at doing stuff or like pronouncing words or doing like a dance, like, and everyone participates. Like no one like sits back and you know, doesn't want to like you know buy into it. Everyone sort of buys into it. Um, you know, we have little challenges and stuff like that. So. You know, it's been really, it's been really, really fun so far. We've had um, uh, obviously the t um, Tongans. We we started it off, um, then the Samoans, and then on Wednesday, oh, Wednesday or Thursday, we had um, the Fijians. And yeah. um, you know, it's, it feels like it's just getting better and better. Like you know, obviously, we started it off, and then the Samoans were like, oh, we got to do this, and then now <laughs> then the Fiji, now then Kane. Well, it was actually funny because it's only Kane and Marcelo. Yeah. Um, the only two Fijians. But they got the help of the local community yeah, so to they come got, and have a car yeah, session. So instead yeah. of just them two doing it, they got about 50 Fijians to yeah. come in. But uh, they're <laughs> awesome. Um, you know, yeah. they bring the kava and they've done a, a big ceremony. Um, you know, and then everyone had a, a cup each and then we done like a dance thing. And, you know, so the, yeah, the, the Kiwis are up next, uh, the Māori, sorry. And then, um, yeah. and then the Aussies are last. So it'll be um, interesting. Eh? Um, Really uh, looking forward to just seeing, you know, what like uh, like facts and and stuff like that, like songs that we learn, yeah. saying that, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. But you know, it's, a, it's a, like again, it's another um, massive, you know, like thank you to the Warriors for for allowing everyone to do that, you know, and getting to you know obviously know each other on a further level. Well, you harness that spirit and and all those emotions, and you put that into a winning team. Yeah, That's definitely. Basically, what you do. I feel like. Knowing someone's background is like you know knowing them on a on a different level. Um, you know sometimes you, know, you could be in a team with a, like let's just say like a, a Fijian for like three years, but not know one thing about you know where he come from. You know, he does. Yeah. or you might think uh, he acts a certain way, but then when you look at this like on their cultural nights, you realise like oh it doesn't just act like that. It's because that's the way like you know his family and you know all his ancestors and. You know his his country sort of lived like that, so yeah. um, you know, it's good, man. It's good. It's really good. It's an eye-opening um, uh, nights when we have those sort of things, and um, you know, uh, yeah, it's good. Well, Adam, thank you very much for joining us um, uh, on NRL uh, Insider on Sky Sport. I uh, got a funny feeling if you can bring that spirit along with the other guys, the Warriors are going that way. Hopefully, in two thousand and twenty-one. Yeah. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> thank you.